Hi everyone and welcome again to WBEL. So here we have the standings for the blind division. So in first place we have myself with 5 points. After that we have Macrain and Torambar with 4 points. Alcar with 3 points. Johnny B, Greatest Ness and Unendured with 2 points. And we have Manta, Randell and Moangman with 1 point. So we have a couple of very very exciting matches uh, today. So please enjoy the show. For this matchup, we have Numero 80 versus Ryndell. On Numero 80's side, I'm predicting Halloween Lucia, Summer Elsorel, and Phoebe. And the more that I look at this team, the more that I end up liking it. Partially because Halloween Lucia's physical barrier against Ryndell's almost entirely physical team, and Summer Elsorel not really having any lightning threats to threaten her from an elemental standpoint. That, in addition to Phoebe being able to give them quick and to dish out even more damage, means that you have a bulky, high damage team coming out from Numero 80. On Ryndale's side, I'm predicting Flag Bear of Reform Glaciella, Charisse, and Ramada. One thing I like about both Flag Bear of Reform Glaciella and Charisse is that they both have barrier breaks, which means that a very tanky Halloween Lucy against physical damage is now going to be much less tanky and much more manageable if Numero 80 does end up bringing that unit. Uh, them both sharing the Wind VC synergy uh, is also really nice. Sharice being able to stay in the back line the, because the map is long enough that range units can do pretty well here. And uh, Ramada being able to share Spear VC synergy with Glaciella is also really nice. And not to even to discount Ramada because we don't see her much, but she does have that massive AoE 50% chance to slow, which could be crippling for Numero 80's team if that lands. Let's get into the match and see what they actually chose. All right, so now we have my fight against Rangdell. So on my side, we have the perfect book team. So we have Summer Sorel, <laughs> Lucia, and Phoebe. On Rangdell's side, we have Fina, Keaton, and Halloween Frederica. So let's see how it went. All right, this is the exact team I predicted for Numero because I am a genius. <laughs> and he uh, knew it in advance. <laughs> <laughs> know that, alright. So, but coming out from Randall's side, uh, I think definitely going for that evasive route, hoping that Numero won't have any sort of guaranteed hits or increased accuracy coming out from his side. Um, I can definitely see where Randall's going, but I am a little afraid because I do think... Oh, I forgot she has the guaranteed hit nullify. Yeah. That could actually be really huge. Because I don't know how accurate Numero's team is. So, Frederica, if she can close the gap before that buff wears off, that could actually be huge. Uh, and with uh, Summer Elsewhere getting quick in there, that that brings her a little bit closer <laughs> to the Halloween Frederica with her buff still up. So, I think this is going to come down to how evasive that Halloween Frederica really is. Because there are the guaranteed hits. I knew that he was going to bring Frederica. Uh, my strategy on this side, uh, on this side is was to uh, wait her out. So uh, she, she's only uh, <laughs> invariable for three turns, so I have to wait for three turns. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that, that makes sense. But like, I think uh, this is only the first turn after her using the buff, so she should still have it for two turns uh, starting now. Uh, but you do have guaranteed hits, at least. Uh, I know Halloween Freder or Halloween. Um, Lucia has a guaranteed hit, but does Summer Elsorel have one? Uh, yes, but because she has the Kododama uh, uh, sub job, so she has, uh, I think, two or three more uh, guaranteed hit moves on that sub job. <laughs> yeah, that's. I love that sub job. So <laughs> yes, taking out the key tone should be pretty easy then. Uh, oh, goes for the LB. Okay. Is the LB also a guaranteed hit? Or Yes. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. That explains it. So that, that yeah, much, absolutely. so much damage, but uh, it's still enough uh, for uh, Frider, uh, oh, Lucia to kill her. And of course, uh, <laughs> she'll have re -raise. You'll see that, that Keton is unkillable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Keton's a crazy unit. Yeah, like, I feel like for how good she is, we don't see her nearly as, as much as we should. And we also forget that uh, Fina is an exceptional healer. Superior oh healing. yeah, Fina's... Yeah. So that Keton is going yes. to resist at least two more turns. <laughs> 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 I was uh, fighting with uh, Randall uh, um, while we were chatting. I was like, man, uh, am I going to finish the fight with enough AP to hit your units? <laughs> 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 it was his strategy. Uh. <laughs> but 
Dark Fina oh, went for that. Uh, yeah, da uh, Lucia went for that Fina, and uh, it really hurt him uh, a lot. A quicken coming from uh, from Phoebe, and uh, Drain Fury coming from uh, Frederica. I mean, like you see, uh, she's not doing much damage to those uh, two uh, book users. So uh, we have Elsarel. I think yes, bursting light, so eating those two units, killing that Kiton, and now it's really not looking good for the for Endo. Yeah, it'll be hard for him to come back from this one. And I guaranteed it move, but she still had courage. But uh, unfortunately for him, uh, he doesn't have uh, a map wide AOE. <laughs> <laughs> He's not bridal <Brandon> alliance. <laughs> <laughs> yes, true. <laughs> so our last guaranteed move, and that's King. Unfortunately for Rainda. Yeah, like I said, that was definitely hard because, like you, like you just said, you have so many guaranteed hits that an evasive team like that, uh, especially with Kito not having the guaranteed hit nullify, is really hard against that specific team that you brought out. So yeah, it was it was a match. Like I, th I think the the choice from Rainda is really really good. Like you said, with uh, Fina having the uh, great healing, being able to do accuracy down. Uh, Frederica having guaranteed hit nullify, like it's a, it's a very well built evasive team, but against a uh, units with a bunch of guaranteed hits makes it so much harder to run effectively. Yeah, I think it would have been better on the smaller, a smaller map. There's also the fact that we didn't start it face to face, so it wasn't at his uh, advantage because uh, Frederica started uh, very far from my uh, units. So uh, the time that she arrived, uh, the uh, guaranteed it nullify, I think uh, there was only like uh, one turn remaining. So that wasn't optimal for him. Yeah, I agree with both of the things you said. I think if you guys were facing off face to face and, and or if it was a smaller map, then it would have been uh, much better because they would have had more turns of that guaranteed hit uh, uh, debuff and not enough time for you to get as many of your buffs off as well. So. Um, could have just been the wrong team comp, could have been the wrong map, or a combination of the two. Yeah, also uh, on the Randall side, it doesn't have, I think, uh, one uh, magical unit. So uh, <laughs> on my side, it was kind of easy to choose uh, two units with a barrier. But I was still very afraid of uh, Cherries and uh, Flagberry Glashila because they both have a barrier break. I decided to took a chance and to uh, wait those units out, uh, try to uh, use a quicken maybe to kill uh, Glaciela very quick quickly, but uh, fortunately for me it went for full evasion. Uh, I was kind of concerned for uh, Frederica, but uh, she didn't add the damage and uh, unfortunately <laughs> for, for him, both my uh, book users have 50% uh, innate stop. <laughs> And plus the, uh, the trust stone, uh, both uh, are uh, immune to stuff, so it wouldn't oh. have been a factor. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that aspect. Yeah, that would have been that would have been horrible too. <laughs> uh, again, uh, thank you, Randell, for the match. Uh, Randell is such an amazing person. Uh, he's really a person that. Uh, when you start conversing with him, uh, his first goal is to uh, make you comfortable, uh, which is really a, a great quality uh, on someone. And also, uh, what he, he doesn't know is that, uh, yes, we started WBL because we were inspired by uh, WDL, but also when we started the idea of the tournament, at first it was a Luchis Cup, only for Argyle, but when Randell auto joined on the spot <laughs> and was like, those rules are really cool, we were like, okay, I, I think we may have something. I mean, if uh, Randell, who hasn't participated in uh, any uh, community tournament in a, a while, uh, auto joined our tournament, maybe we have something. So <laughs> the, the, the idea started because of Randell. Yeah, I can't understate how important it was for both of us that he showed an interest in that. You know, it, it, for me, it gave me the kick in the rear it needed to, you know, really get excited and and pumped up over this tournament. So uh, a big shout out to you. Uh, <laughs> you didn't know, but uh, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> and don't worry, guys. Uh, Rindel's not too much bum out about his result. I asked him if he was still uh, enjoying the league, and he, it was an automatic uh, yes, uh, really. Uh, what he said basically it was uh, that. Uh, the, the matches are really uh, interesting to follow. He also talked about the combinations that the players are showing to us are, are really uh, creative and uh, that makes it uh, really uh, enjoyable. So yeah, I think that 
on this side it, it's his first time participating in this kind of league and also uh, like he said he under evaluated some picks uh, some sleeper picks according to him uh, like that murmur that uh, we're seeing in all the uh, fights but yeah he, he knows that if he had the chance he, he could do uh, a lot better so yeah thank you again for joining uh, it was really fun talking to you and i really hope that we'll have the chance to uh, fight again <laughs> GG's to both players and congrats to Numero. Yes, congrats to Numero. <laughs> <laughs> For this matchup, we have Greatestness versus McCrane. On Greatestness side, I'm going to be predicting the Hyo, Cloud, and Zazan. Both Hyo and Cloud don't have very many elemental counters coming out from McCrane's side. They're both great swords, so they have that amazing great sword VC synergy. And Cloud even has a guaranteed hit in case McCrane decides to go evade with like Pissarro or something like that. Uh, and that's not even, I talk about them, but that's not to discount to Sazan, who's an amazing support unit. Uh, he can Keenblade, he can give Man Eater a buff, he can be a disruptor for their buffs, he can tank, he can kind of Swiss Army Knife do everything. Uh, going over to McCrane's side, I'm going to be predicting the Lightning, Whisper, and Galzik. So Lightning would be a solo DPS, but she does so much damage even while still being an older unit, that being a solo DPS is perfectly fine for her. Uh, and then you have that classic composition of the tank, DPS, and healer with both Lightning and Whisper sharing the Sword Knight VC synergy. So I think that that could be a very strong team with some good sustain, as long as Whisper can stay alive and Lightning can put out enough damage in time. But let's get into the match and see what they actually chose. All right, so here we have Greatest Ness against McRain. So on Greatest Ness side, we have Eo, Kingman, and Zazan. On McRain's side, we have Zazan, Lightning, and Sadly. So let's see how this match went. All right, coming out from Greatest Ness side, we have the Double Fire, which is not really a surprise considering the only water unit that comes out from McRain is the Zazan. So this is a very solid team, and uh, honestly, I don't blame him at all for picking it. And then McCrane's side, uh, also, I have to commend that team because Lightning is what I expected as a DPS. I did not expect the Sodaly, but now looking at it in fight, I think it makes a lot of sense. You know, Sodaly has the amazing uh, re-raise buff for himself and an ally, and having that on Lightning could be massive. Because uh, she, she I, like I mentioned in the uh, analysis, Lightning as a solo DPS, even though she's an older unit who hasn't gotten her 140, she still puts out a lot of damage and can do a lot of work. And Sodaly, I mean, we already know how much damage he can also do, so this is a scary team also coming out from McCrane. So uh, right now, I see all the, a lot of the important buffs coming off. Uh, not any haste buffs coming out from each side yet, but I just saw King Rain get his... Uh, I saw King Mountain get his hate buff off. And then there's Sodaly with the re-raise buff off, but it is on the Zazan and not on the Lightning. So Zazan working as a tank for McCrane's side, uh, not too surprising. Uh, also, we saw him at uh, level 133, so he's going to have a little bit more hate than he would at the full 140. Yeah. And he comes in with the first hit. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that was a big chunk of damage on the eel. I was not expecting that. Oh, wow. oh my goodness. <laughs> This lightning is putting in the work. <laughs> that was so much damage. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Zazan is a water unit and he's not really bulky, but the uh, EO again uh, down uh, on the first shot. Wow. Uh, okay, so uh, one damage. He survived because of courage. So a non traitor. Not a lot of damage, unfortunately for him. Even on that on that uh, lightning. So now we have King Leonis, but I think it's only hitting the Zazan. I think so. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, so uh, lightning yes. uh, going next, uh, so a lot of AP to work with, killing that uh, EO, so now we have, uh, oh wow, okay, so uh, the follow up really uh, hit hard, and yeah, I, I don't think that uh, he's going to uh, to go back, oh wow. Wow, yeah, that was a very fast match. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and like I said, it was also just a very dominant showing from McCrane's side. Mm -hmm. uh, cause I was worried that Hyo would have gone down before we got to see how much damage he could do. Because that's always one thing that's a bit of a shame is to know, like, okay, well, if he, the positioning was off by like one square, if he was able to get a hit in. Uh, but we did get to see Hyo deal some damage, but it was only about 2,000 on both of the yeah. uh, Lightning and I think it was the Zon. So, uh, yeah, the McCrane, I mean, We've said it week after week, but his team is just so incredibly bulky. 
Uh, and that uh, that was wasn't the only reason why McCrane won, but it was definitely a contributing factor. Uh, yeah, that was that was very impressive showing. It was kind of sur surprising because Gritness team wasn't so bulky and didn't add a lot of damage. <laughs> so uh, Lightning was able to uh, go through his team uh, <laughs> in a flash. Yeah, the, the King Mont, once, I think if the King Mont was able to get a little bit more forward and he was able to stay in the back, there would have been more of a chance. Um, because the King Mont actually did end up surviving pretty well uh, yeah. up until yeah. the end there. But yeah, the, the Hyo, uh, and not meant to be the bulkiest of units, but uh, yeah, unfortunately he was in the line of fire and was able to take a lot of the damage. Like I said, it was a yeah. good idea coming out from Greatestness, but it unfortunately just wasn't. The, the damage and the bulk just weren't there for this matchup against McCrane. I have to pick a surprising key of the match. I'll give it to that Zazan because uh, he was able to uh, isolate that uh, King Mount and he uh, did, because of that, he did his uh, LB only on Zazan. It could have been big if it uh, would have been on that uh, Lightning. I mean, yeah, I. I... I, I don't want to just piggyback off of yours, but I have to fully agree because Zazan, just not even his attack or anything, but just his positioning, being right in the enemy's face and off to the side where they weren't really able to get AoEs off. I mean, Kyo did just have the one AoE that also hit lightning, but at the LB from King Mont only hitting the Zazan, Kyo only barely hitting the lightning and the Zazan was just huge. That positioning was just perfect. Because of that, sadly, the, that team was really bulky and uh, was able to uh, tank uh, <laughs> even more than King Mont. Yeah, that was that was incredibly surprising. Because at first, I didn't predict the Sobeli because Greatness does have two ice units, and I thought it would have been a little t a little scary to bring him into ice. But I mean, he had the ice resist TMR and didn't even need it. You know, <laughs> he uh, the crane chose very well uh, for this team. Why are you still surprised from the guy that can influence what we're going to bring in our sleep? <laughs> 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 All right, so uh, GG to both players and congratulations to McCrink. Yep, GG to both players. For this matchup, we have Malgan Man versus Unhindered. So this matchup's a bit strange because Malgan Man is running that cold triangle with water, ice, and earth, with Unhindered running the warm triangle in lightning, fire, and wind. So because of that, there's not really any safe matchups here. Normally when I do my predictions, I try and choose a very safe matchup that you can kind of reasonably bring instead of trying to mind game out your opponent, but there's not a whole lot of that here. So from Malkin Man's side, I'm actually going to be predicting the Perrine, Urel, and Ishtola. I think going for more job VC synergy will let you choose multiple elements, which even if Unhindered brings the lightning, at least Urel will have her covered. And if Unhindered brings wind, well, at least Perrine's not weak to it. <laughs> so uh, I think running that strategy is good, and then having Ishtola there as a support could be pretty strong. From Unhindered's side, I think he could go with the More Than Merrier, Howlet, and Rain. Even though Malgan Man does have ice units, one is a support and the other one is a 70 cost, so it's not the most dangerous thing to run two wind units. And you even have the Rain there in case he does end up bringing the Laswell. So he's done well with this team in the past, and I could definitely see him bringing it right now. But, like I said before, I'm curious to see what they actually brought, so let's get into the match and see what they actually chose. Alright, so here we have Moang Man against Unendured. So on Moang Man's side, we have Astrius, Laswell, and Gishtola. On Unendured side, we have Rain, Moore, and MVP Howlet. So let's see how it went. <laughs> Alright, so this is the exact team I predicted from Unhindered. But on um, Malcolm Man's side, actually going with the Katana team, which, as I look at it, it also works out very well, especially against this exact team from Unhindered, because he has the two wind units versus the Laswell, and that could be huge in this matchup. So as long as they can get through that rain in time, and Laswell doesn't get stuck there, then I think that this could actually go in Malcolm Man's favor. But that's not to uh, minimize Unhindered's side, because we have seen this team put in work, we know how strong, you know, MVP Howlett. <laughs> that's that's the meme, that's the joke. So we know how good he oh. is. Uh, and then Marymore puts in some damage too. So uh, Rain, who is a uh, fire unit, uh, really tank that uh, cross de destruction very well because it's an AoE. So uh, because of this, uh, it didn't do uh, much damage. Uh, also, uh, we have Marymore that uh, did no damage that last well, so it broke his uh, barrier. 
Uh, so now we have rain and LB on Yeshdola. Uh, did it kill her? No, oh. we didn't. Oh, that's going to be huge because she will be able to heal uh, probably uh, one turn. So, oh. Okay. okay, so we have a single target at, uh, targeted attack on that rain. I'm surprised that it didn't die in uh, one go because it's not uh, really bulky against a uh, physical uh, oh, single. No. Oh wow! Oh. Yeah, so rain <laughs> lost hate at the last minute. That's, oh, that's so bad. Yeah, that was really big. That uh, the fact that uh, he didn't add much hate. Okay, so uh, that's a lot of damage on that last well, despite the uh, elemental advantage. Yeah, well, I mean, here comes the Ashtola's going down. If that slowed the Astrius, it actually would be kind of interesting. But unfortunately, since Ray doesn't have hate, yeah, Mary Moore is going down here. Unfortunately. It was really so, a, yeah. a great thing for Unender that his ring was uh, very uh, surprisingly Ooh. bulky. But uh, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> Moing Man bring a, a rain killer. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> And like I said, honestly, if Rain had just one more hit of hate, I actually think this match would have went to unhindered. Yeah. I think because that Laswell double killing both the wind units, that I mean, that was yeah. pretty much game right there. If both of them had one more turn, especially with Laswell's barrier being down, I could definitely like with how much damage Marymore and uh, Howlett can put out, I I definitely could see it going in unhindered's favor. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, unfortunate for Unhindered, but very fortunate for Malgan Man. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, uh, all that uh, was able to eat those two uh, win units. That's really un unfortunate that uh, Rain uh, <laughs> didn't add uh, much 8. I think he didn't add time to use his 8 buff, right? I don't think so. I think he... he ran ah, I'd have to rewatch it. Right scene, away. I don't, I don't think he did. Yeah, he used Heart of Flutter, and then he was in range to attack next. Yeah, yeah. so uh, it's what we talk, so uh, <laughs> Arda Flutter coming uh, on the first turn. I mean, it's a great strategy, uh, I really like it, but uh, unfortunately for him, more and uh, all that were too far away and uh, didn't have uh, enough mobility, so they weren't able to engage at the right time. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think that was the biggest problem, is that the hate buff didn't get off for a sustained match, but I don't think he was expecting a sustained match. <laughs> yeah, with those big uh, magic AoEs. Oh yeah, like I said, if Hal and Mary Morg had the chance to attack, they put out so much damage that I, I, I think even the elemental disadvantage against the last one would not have mattered. Yeah, it's true. I think that uh, all that didn't add time to uh, to do one attack, I think. No, I don't think so. Because uh, I think the drain invocation that broke Laswell's barrier came out from Mary Moore, if I remember yes. right. Yes. So yeah, yeah, he didn't he didn't get to attack at all. Mm, that's so unfortunate. Uh, all right, yeah. so I guess I'll have to uh, give the key of the match to uh, speed on the uh, Mohamed side. Oh yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, seeing Mohamed's team just lap, uh, I think, yeah, the, the speed was definitely there for Mohamed, and uh, yeah, Rain losing the hate, uh, you know, I guess that would also be kind of the key of the match for me as well, because Laswell getting in there and doing that double kill was just that was game. <laughs> Well, uh, GG to both players, and uh, congratulations to uh, Mongman. Yep, GG to both players. For this matchup, we have Johnny B versus Manta. On Johnny B's side, I'm predicting Skahal, Dario, and Naya. I think this team is great, not just against Manta's lineup, but also for the map. The map is pretty flat, and Skahal likes maps that don't have those drastic changes in elevation. Uh, but if you look over at Manta's team, there is no Earth. Uh, one of the strong teams Manta can bring is a Perrine Dea comp, and Skahal has the elemental advantage against that. Engelbert's weak to magic. Halloween Lucia's barrier is physical. I mean, that's already very strong. And then when you pair it up with Naya, you also have the Reflect for Halloween Lucia and Sakura. So you cover a lot of Manta's units just right there. On Manta's side, I'm going to be predicting the Flag Bearer of Reform Glaciella, Charisse, and Slime. I think going duo wind is one of the more safe options you can choose because I think out of all the options that Johnny B has, I don't see him bringing out either of his ice units. I'm prepared to eat my words on that, but I just don't see it. Uh, and so I think elementally that's pretty safe and flag bear reform Glaciella has the re-raise removal that could come in handy. On top of all of that, you have a ranged unit in Charisse and this is a long enough map that I think ranged units are going to do very well. So let's get into the match and see what these players brought. 
All right, so here we have Manta against Johnny B. So on Manta's side, we have Glaciella, Halloween Lucia, and Mish. On Johnny B's side, we have Uni, Ravius, and Skaal. So let's see how it went. I'll make a prediction that Mish is going to be the MVP of the match. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I can actually see it. Like I said, I, with Richard Ravius getting oh. so close already. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's a bloodbath already. A bloodbath? Uh, no, she's so tanky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think this is exactly what Johnny B wants to see because they're not able to get off any initial buffs. Yeah. Uh, the, that non-buff on Glaciella is going to be really huge. Even wow, if Ravius is, uh, has died in the two turns. Oh. Okay, so uh, we have an offensive uh, Mish, so a uh, Ferrega. Oh, a lot of damage on that scale, Ooh. so he's uh, already at one hit away to die. And uh, so reflex on the Mish on that uh, Uni. So now uh, Glaciella has his buff. Okay, it's really not looking good for Johnny, unfortunately. This uh, is the turn. turn. Oh, wow! Okay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Two shot. Oh, wow. Okay, I said nothing. I. <laughs> <laughs> I never played that game. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. Oh, re-raised! <laughs> yeah. He had time to use it. it, so we have a scout going. Is it... Oh, the oh, reflex! Yeah. Oh my god, what is this, this smash? <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh. Uh, and. Oh, the counter! Oh, okay. the counter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Oh, uh, okay, that was, time that was a sing. match. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was a really good match. Okay, I'm going to need a second there, because, yeah, there... I didn't even get a chance to talk about anything, because the match is starting off right off the, right off the bat. Uh, yeah, that was incredible. Uh, like, I, I, in my prediction, I had mentioned I thought Johnny B was going to go with the, the Naya Dario team, uh, because it seemed like a really good team for uh, Skahal. But it seems like he opted for the Winter Ravius instead, expecting that uh, uh, Flagberry Glaciella, which I think was very smart from his side. Uh, but unfortunately, it seemed like, man, I, that I just can't get over. <laughs> I can't get over what happened that match. Uh, the reflex was just massive. Yeah. I'm at a loss for words. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh... We had hope with this uh, counter coming from Skull, but uh, we we'll, we really have to uh, give the key of the match to that reflex on Glaciella. At a moment, I thought that Johnny had no hope. The moment after, <laughs> I, I thought that the Manta had no hope. I mean, yeah. what a roller coaster match! <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I in, in fact that was the other thing is I predicted Raph instead of the Glaciella uh, for Manta, but. The, the glass yellow really showing i mean not just the reflex but uh i think it was she was a really smart choice because she has the re-raise removal she has uh the healing power down so like i think she was a really good choice to bring against the skahal if that's what manta was expecting uh but man i yeah i, I, like I said I, I'm, I'm really at a loss for words <laughs> that was a roller coaster match like numero said yeah uh um, of course the uh, match with against uh, moang man was uh, <laughs> really entertaining but I, I think this one was uh, probably the the most exciting so far yeah i mean it got off to a very quick start that it, it, it i mean just back and forth the entire match there was like no slowing down so yeah that i don't know that definitely has to be one of the one, definitely one of the most exciting matches for sure so uh, GG to Reflex and uh, congratulations to uh, Manta. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, GG's to both players. Congrats to Manta. Alright, so for this matchup we have Turambar versus Alcor. The funny thing I wanted to point out before this match starts is that this map is a little long and with some cover on the sides, so missile units are actually pretty good on this map. The Both teams here have the opportunity to run missile compositions, but both teams also have Raldor, who's a very good anti-missile unit. So there's a bit of mind games at play as to are they going to bring the missile comp? Are they going to bring an anti-missile comp? Or are they going to do something completely different? So it also makes it hard for me to even predict. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and guess that both teams are going to predict a missile comp from the other and run anti-missile. So from Turnbar's side, I'm going to go with Alphonse Elric, 
Raldor and Mariluke. And with Alcor's side, I'm going to go with Perrine, Raldor, and Mariluke. So it might be a bit rough for Alcor if this does happen because of the elemental advantage from Alphonse, but I think that they're both going to predict a missile comp from the other. So, But let's get into the match and see what they actually ended up doing. All right, so here we have Torumbar against Alcor. So on Torumbar's side, we have Murmur, Ferris, and Miranda. On Alcor's side, we have Mish, Raph, and Queen Mesherine. So let's see how it went. If I'm able to start that video. <laughs> All right, so coming out from Torumbar's side, we have the Red Mage comp. Very classic, very strong, very dependable. I mean not really too much to say about it besides it's a strong team uh alcor side however we have the mace team which is one that i am excited and uh like i said a little surprised to see it was actually one i wanted to predict but i didn't think that there was like a lot of good magic mace vcs but i'm so that's why i'm very curious to see how this actually ends up going uh wow me just getting out there in front and wanting to do his best as a tank he said, get out of the way, Raph. <laughs> I'm going to tank this damage. Uh, it looks like the initial placement from Turnbar is not what was expected from Alcor's side. But maybe Raph will be able to pull them away far enough. Unless Miranda's in range, which it looks like she is. So I don't I don't think Mish is, is long for this world here. <laughs> so you don't uh, like uh, physical VCs for uh, mace users? <laughs> <laughs> oh, disable! Oh, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I take that back. Mish lives another day. <laughs> oh, that's going to be huge. Wow. It not only took her out of the fight for the next few turns, but it saved Mish there. So he was able yeah. to actually get some damage in. Wow. So we have a speedy Ferris going forward, doing a lot of damage on that Meshery, healing back that Miranda. So next we have Murmur, she's in range, Jamming Trust, almost killing that Mish. <laughs> so now we have Queen Meshery, what is she going to do? Can she hit them all? Yes, oh, okay, Queen Gambit. Three, yeah. So it's a big AoE. Let's see uh, the damage now. Nearly killing Ooh. that uh, Miranda, not enough. And uh, that Ferris really tanked it very well. She, oh wow, wow, she's very bulky. Yeah, that Ferris is... Very bulky here. So next, uh, Ferris going again. Who is she going to hit? So Raph. Uh, oh, she, uh, so that Raph is really uh, tanky too. So next, we have Mish. Uh, probably another Far uh, Faraga. Let's see. Ab Abyssal Mire, of course. Nice. So, uh, Miranda's okay. going to uh, Courage. So Ferris again. Again? I think it's only on that Raph. Who's I think so too. I see the ones lit up. Yeah, e just the round. Oh, of damage, nearly 8k, but the heal back uh, proc. So now we have a uh, Meshery probably uh, going to. Uh, okay, no, we have two. Okay, no, she, she's probably going to hit them all three. Okay, no, drain strike. So heal back again. That Ferris won't take any damage, but now she only has 18 uh, AP. So we have Murmur, Flare on that Raph, nearly killing that Raph, I think it's going to be big. So double it, okay, so uh, I think that Ferris is uh, going down slowly. So now we have uh, Mish, Shadow Flare, non-elemental attack. It's going to group them, but uh, Murmur is dead. Next we have Queen Meshery, it's looking very good for Alcor now, uh, now. so it's... Uh, Alcor's match to drop, <laughs> and Ferris is still <laughs> not dead, but she's oh going again. God. One last attack, better be good. Uh, only <laughs> on like, <laughs> I'm taking out one unit before I go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's not a tree zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Very the impressive win by Alcor again. Yeah. And like I said, impressive from both sides in terms of uh, there's just the absolute bulk on that Ferris. Yeah. My goodness. <laughs> I was surprised to see her live as long as she did. I mean, she, I knew she was a bulky unit, but not to that extent. That was that was something else. 
Yeah, that was a, a very flawless match from uh, Alcor. Raf really tanked very well too. Uh, the team was well positioned because only the Raf took the damage during all fight long. Uh, Queen Machery barely was it. Um, of course, uh, <laughs> Misha tanked a lot, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he was clearly very lucky to survive. That, that disable on that Miranda, though, we have to give the key of the match to that machery for that disable. It was absolutely crucial for that one. Oh, 100%. Yeah, th there's no way I'm giving key of the match to anything else besides the disable. I don't even think we got to see Miranda, because I think the disable went away before she died, but I don't remember seeing damage come out from her. Maybe, maybe one attack. But still, yeah, she, she just wasn't the factor in this whole fight because of that disable. So it was pretty much just Ferris and Murmur doing as their best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Miranda was at the front line during all fight long, but uh, because of the heal back coming from Ferris, she was able to uh, survive a, a, a long way. <laughs> yeah, and like I said, it was just a, a very uh, long, sustained sort of fight coming out from both teams, but... Uh, yeah, Alcor is able to clutch it out there at the very end with uh, just a bit more bulk and a bit more damage due to having three units that can attack. <laughs> oh man, the, the fight uh, on the, the blind division this week, it's, it's really crazy. <laughs> oh yeah, this, this has been a really exciting week for fights and I'm all for it. So Enthusiast Division, better be good on your side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know... My fight's uh, is something, so you have that to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so GG to both players, and congratulations to Alcor. Yep, GG to both players. Oh, man, <laughs> what a sick week. And what's nice is that it's going to be, it's going to be as crazy in the next video uh, in the Enthusiast Division. Okay, so now we're seeing a very, very tight uh, standings. So we have uh, myself with 6 points, Macrain with 5 points, and then we have Alcar and Torambar with 4 points, and then <laughs> we have Johnny B, Mentag, Moangman, Unendured, and Greatestness that each have 2 points. So absolutely everything is possible. Uh, we have uh, 5 people fighting for the uh, last, uh, last seeds. Uh, I think that it's going to be pretty crazy until the uh, end of the season. Of course, uh, nothing's done yet for Alcar and Turambar, but at least for them, they have an advance on the others. So thank you all for uh, joining in and uh, watching this video, and I hope that we're going to see you in the next ones. Thank you, have a nice week. any team I would have put money on of getting correctly it would have been Johnny B because I think I think this map is an amazing Skahal map and so I was like okay yeah he's gonna go Skahal, Naya, Dario like it just feels like it just makes sense right like <laughs> like I don't know why you wouldn't go Skahal, Naya, Dario against Manta's team because Manta <laughs> has a lot of magic units so Naya's huge you know Lucia has her physical bear. Like, there is so many reasons why Skahal, Naya, Dario just made sense. And to go Skahal, Winter of Yes, Uni just feels like he's he's purposefully like just fucking with me. <laughs> so I don't. Okay, whatever. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, the reach, side makes sense. The reach what? those players go to mess with you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but okay, but.